What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me again. And uh, today, we're, I wanted to do a presentation on cosplay photography, ordinary to stunning. So our goal here is to try and set the record straight as to um, creating good, um, good, you know, creating not just good but stunning. Uh, cosplay photography, um, cosplay photos. So our purpose is to equip new and experienced photographers with the tools that they need to create stunning images, stunning cosplay images. And please excuse my spelling. My spell check uh, kind of messed up on me a little bit. Our learning objectives, we want to start with um, preparing for the photo shoot. Uh, we want to remind ourselves of good photography technique and we want to, I would like to provide you with some new posing ideas. So we're really starting from the beginning and going all the way through to um, to improve see if you improve this process you find that on the other end that the photos are going to look a lot better so we have to address the entire photography process from the beginning all the way up to hitting the shutter so that's what our attempt is to do today so um, we want to talk to our cosplayer or model about the time and place of the shoot. We need to be on the same page about that. Not calling them once you get there and asking them where they're at and things like that is being set. It's saying, okay, I'm going to be here at so-and-so time at this place. Can you get there? Are you going to be able to make it at this time? That needs to be set in stone and you need to put that in your calendar or whatever you use to keep track of your appointments. Pre-photo shoot uh, discussions, we're, here we want to talk about knowing what costume or outfits that the cosplayer and model are going to have on the day of the shoot. That's also something that you need to talk about. I've been on shoots where um, the model never sent me a picture or never told me what they were going to wear. And so I couldn't be prepared. And so that's, that's an issue. Okay. You have to know in advance what it is that your uh, model or your cosplayer is going to be wearing. Um, and then you also need to research the cosplay. Research it. Find out who the character is. What kind of story are they in? What kind of, uh, you know, all those kind of things. What does the wig look like? What kind of hair, you know, is it? Um, do I need to bring special equipment to, to you know, bright, to, to brighten up the background or make it, make it darker or anything like that? Those kind of things need to be, uh, you need to know that. So you need to research for yourself. Uh, makeup is an essential part of cosplay photography. If you expect your images to be stunning, you need to have good makeup. So you need to be on the same page with your model or your cosplayer about that. I've had some cosplayers have been, it's been hard to try and get them to have the, the right makeup on. But you really need to try and uh, convince them that that is an important part because you know without good makeup you, you're going to have an image that's okay but it's not going to move over into stunning good makeup can you know make or break you know and if you've seen the latest um, if you've seen the, the if you've seen Suicide Squad you know how important it is um, Harley Quinn um, I thought it was absolutely gorgeous and the makeup, the job that they did on her makeup in, uh, in the Suicide Squad, uh, movie was absolutely beautiful. And that's just, that shows you how important that is. And to be honest with you, 
that's the first Harley Quinn I've seen from either movies or video games or whatever that look that good. So, you know, and the makeup is a critical part of that. And so, and that's the same thing with cosplayers. I've seen cosplayers who have great makeup and I loved shooting with them because that makeup was on point. So those are just things to consider. Um, these are just some uh, things that we already know that we should do, but hearing it uh, again is always a good idea. Gear should be prepared in advance. Charge your batteries, clean your lenses, make sure everything works properly, make sure you have everything. I do a little check sheet to make sure I have everything. Um, so that's something that you should do the night, two nights before. Uh, photographer and cosplayer mo uh, or model should arrive to the location 15 minutes early. That's always a good idea. Um, sometimes the photographer might want to get there early just to make sure everything is safe and all that, you know. So those are always a good idea. And if you aren't able to make it on the day of the shoot, sometimes things happen. Please, please, please call, email your photographer or your model in advance. The earlier the better. Get their phone number, Facebook. Email is not good enough. Get their phone number. Call them. Okay? Not just, not just text. Another important thing is holding your camera correctly. I don't know how many times I've seen photographers hold their cameras incorrectly and then I look at their images and they're blurry as heck. So, um, very simple. Tuck those arms in. Um, hold the lens at the bottom. Don't, don't squeeze the lens. Just, you know, kind of hold it like you're, you're holding, a, um, like you're holding a, a baby, um, so that you can be able to turn and to turn and zoom in or zoom out or, or manual focus if that's what you do. If you're um, if you're shooting in portrait mode, um, then you want to again have one arm tucked in to your chest. The other arm, you want to um, have it on the shutter button and try and hold it as steady as possible. Um, and make sure that your, uh, your legs, um, you know, your, your whole body is meant to help you steady that camera so that you can get a nice sharp image. Photography techniques, framing, framing perspective, very important. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about all of the other, you know, things in framing, but you can just take a look at these pictures and you see that in this shot, it's in the rule of thirds. This is going more towards the right of the um, um, more towards the right of the frame, and um, it's just in, just important that you know where you want your subject. Um, you know that's something very important. Oh, I advanced a little too fast there. Okay, so. This image is more towards the center of the frame. Um, and uh, you can, you know, it just shows you another place that you can, uh, that you can, uh, that you can put the, put the image. Um, this image, I was actually standing over her, over, uh, over this cosplayer. And um, so it kind of looks like I'm, I'm up over her a little bit but still towards the uh, right of the frame so it fits within the rule of thirds so you know again that's what you can what you can do um, and it's about the same thing here she's on the stairs and it's more I, I was diagonally um, I was standing like diagonal towards her and um, you see I was able to so it, it kind of looks like she's diagonal but again um, still within that uh, rule of thirds this cosplayer is on the couch, more towards the right of the frame. So that's something else that you can that you can that you can do. Um, 
you know, so these are just some examples of different perspectives. And there's a whole lot of examples that I could show you, but um, these are just some ideas, some examples of different perspectives that you can take. Um, and another important um, subject is cropping. Um, now, the green lines indicate good areas to crop. Um, I, there's a lot of photographers who have problems with this. You know, the, the cropping just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll crop out the feet at the, at the way bottom and just, it doesn't really make any sense or, you know, um, they'll crop the wrong places in the legs and things of that nature. So those are just things to consider. If you're taking a headshot, don't crop out their ears. Okay. You can crop right up to the neck, but don't crop out the ears, you know? Um, so the cropping should just make sense. This, this uh, picture is just simply a guide. Um, and, um, it's a, it's a guide. It's a good starting point, but these are areas that you should consider. So the green areas are areas that you can consider. The red areas are what you would try to, um, what I would advise you to try and avoid. Here's some examples of some good, of, uh, of, um, of a shoot that I did. Um, th these photos were published in cosplay design magazine. Um, so you can see starting from the left going from left to right um we have a full body shot and then the middle shot is more of the waist up shot and then we come all the way in and we get torso to like run right on top of the head so if you look back all of these pretty much match up with the um, um pretty much match up with the the um um the previous slide that I showed you, and I do apologize. Some of the um, some of these are, are, are getting a little bit cut out by the um, um, the program that I using to record this video. Um, here's another good example. This is a um, um, this is more of a, a, a headshot, but it's like shoulder. It's like shoulder to rest of the way up. So again, it, it's a crop that makes sense. Lighting. Lighting is critically important. Okay. Um, as photographers, we know that um, we speak with light in our images. So we need to know how to properly light our subjects. And there's a myriad of ways, but some basic things is just to simply know what we're trying to accomplish. Like in this image, are we trying to accomplish a nice soft lighting on our face? Um, that's what we're doing here. Same with this image. Very nice soft lighting on the face. Um, the background is blurry, but um, just a really soft lighting on the face. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not too bright. It's, it's uh, soft enough, and there's enough contrast. It, it creates enough contrast to shadow on the face to make the image look pleasing to look at. Um, this image is more of a spotlight image. It was a uh, dark house. It was, um, this was shot at Wayne State and uh, that's in Detroit, Michigan. And um, you can see that we simply used uh, one light to uh, try and illuminate her face and more of a little uh, spotlight. Um, so, um, and so you can do this where it can, it can be a little bit of light outside and then we use um, another light to, um, to spot, to like try and spotlight a little bit. And it, it starts to bring us more towards dramatic lighting. This is a good example of dramatic lighting. Um, I used a double flash on this shot. Um, one flash uh, was diffused and um, well, it was in an octobank uh, without the white film on it and the whole idea was just to illuminate one side of her face and then we have this little um, other lighting on the other side I had with a second flash to try and carve out her uh, mask of her uh, Catwoman mask a little bit and so um, you can see that it uh, really brings out the eyes it really brings out the lipstick um, and it really helps to carve her face um, out 
and uh, there's even specular highlights on uh, on the glove, especially the one that's worth the right of the frame. Um, so, again, that's something that you can do with. Um, that's uh, that's a good example of dramatic lighting. And dramatic lighting is something that's really really good uh, at using in uh, cosplay photography. This is even better example of dramatic lighting. Uh, this was simply one, we had, we used one flash on this one. That was again in an octobank and we just had it very close to her and just completely lit her very nicely. And we have a good um, light to shadow ratio here. And, um, you know, that that's something that's very good. And even the pattern across the face looks very good. And you can use that with different shaping tools and things that you might use. Um, this one was shot in the studio, so we had a bit more control as to what the light would actually look like. But this is kind of where you want to try and achieve um, achieve a good balance of light to of uh, light to shadow ratio when you're trying to do dramatic lighting. So let's talk about posing. These are the, some things to consider when you're, um, to keep in mind when you're trying to pose. Make sure that the cosplayer looks good. That's what we always want. That's the top goal, is to make sure that your cosplayer looks good. No matter what their size is, no matter um, how tall they are, no matter who they are, you want to make sure that the cosplayer looks good. Poses can be sexy, but should also be tasteful. Um, there's been a lot of discussion at least that I've seen when people talk about, well, cosplay is too sexy and all this kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, cosplay is going to be sexy. I mean, there's really nothing that you could do to get around that. But it can be tasteful. Okay? Um, you don't have to do, you, you don't have to, you know, put your cosplayer in a very uncompromising position and take photos of them that they might regret in a couple of years. So, you know, um, so, Sexy, but tasteful. Demonstrate the pose to your cosplayer. Demonstration is the best thing that you can do. It's generally not a good idea to touch your cosplayer. Um, there's, uh, you know, if you're friends with them or have known them for a long time or something like that, um, then they may give you some leeway on that role. But generally the rule is that you don't want to cut, touch your cosplayer. So the best thing to do is to demonstrate it to them. So that means that you have to know the poses. Allow your cosplayer to modify the poses so they can be more comfortable. You know, I think that's really important. Let your cosplayer experiment with the with the pose. Show them a general pose and then let them modify it a little bit. Let them put their foot someplace else or adjust their ankle or adjust their hand somewhere. You know, let them let them kind of experiment and make the pose their own. It can be more comfortable and it'll look better. Remember, every person has a different size and everyone can look good in cosplay. And that goes back to my first point is that everybody can look good. Um, it's just up to you as a photographer to make sure that you're get, setting them up to be to to look very good in uh, in, in their cosplay and their image. The pose can make the photo, and a lot of times you may be working in the background, but uh, that that may not be boring or something like that. But that pose is going to make the photo. That's just something to keep in mind. The pose can make the photo. You can have a very well lit cosplayer, and then the, you have to toss the image because the pose doesn't look good or it's awkward. So remember that the pose can make. A photo. Here are some examples, some some posing examples. These are um, two of them are standing poses. One is the one in the middle is a uh, sitting pose, and um, you'll see a lot of sitting poses. Um, but um, I want to draw your attention in the um, the two standing poses where um, what the car, what this uh, model is doing with her uh, hand. Um, you see that she has her, 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 um, to your, the image to the, uh, fur, further left, um, her arm is elongated 
and um, she's flipped her hand onto her leg. Very elegant. Okay. Um, to the image to the further right, you can see that she sort of uh, twisted her body a little bit to the left, and she's she has her hand, her uh, her right hand is kind of curved up um, under her chin. It's a very elegant way to pose your cosplayer. Um, that is what you want to do with the hand. And um, the more that the hand is closed, all the fingers are closed instead of open, the better the image looks. So it looks very elegant. The middle image, um, you can see how we've had her, um, how she's sitting, how she has her arm, how she has her weight on um, one arm and the other arm, the other hand is uh, resting on her, uh, on her thigh. And uh, that is also a great example. Um, one hand is the being used, the base hand, the other one is accenting, is accenting the pose with her hand being on the thigh. So, um, and that's just something to remember. You're going to see a lot of that with the following examples. Um, another great example of, uh, this is another sitting pose. Um, I want to draw your attention to, uh, her legs. So well, let's talk about her hands first. Um, the hand that she has resting on her knee and it's just, you know, and then the other hand is she's, you know, she's, um, holding herself up with it. So, you know, again, that's one hand is serving as the base, the other serving as the accent. Um, but I want to draw your attention to the legs. The legs are forming triangles. Shapes in photos are very, very interesting to look at. And even the image itself, if you take the image as a whole, you can see that it's forming a, uh, forming a, a, a triangle. You can see the three sides going from the bunny ears down to um, uh, down to her uh, thigh, and then running from her thigh to her foot, and then from her foot all the way back up to the bunny ears. You see that's a triangle, and then both of her legs are forming triangles as well. And so you see that we have three triangles in one image. This is a pose that I really like to use a lot because uh, it accomplishes that every single time. So shapes are something that's very, very important in cosplay. I mean, in any kind of photography and using uh, using the body to form shapes um, is a skill that is that that you really have to work on and develop because it takes your images from ordinary to stunning without much effort. Here's another great pose. This is laying on her side. Um, I want to draw your attention again to the legs. Um, the uh, one leg is serving as the base leg. The other leg, the one that's on top, is serving more of an accent. Um, and uh, again, that's that's something that's important. Just so you can do it. The same thing with the hands. Um, and and her hands, her elbow, is serving as the base. And um, her hand is actually accenting when it's actually t uh, grabbing a little bit of the wig and the other hand is resting on the side and you can just see how elegant and gorgeous it looks. And so this is again, another type of pose. Um, now this pose usually has the, uh, the base leg is usually stretched out is usually, uh, fully, uh, straight with the, um, with the accent leg resting on top of it forming a 90 degree um, uh, angle um, but we but again I let her modify it a little bit and we still got a very nice uh, a very nice image out of it again this is another great example of a good uh, sitting pose um, take a look at the legs again base leg um, and she has one leg stretched out she has the fan in her hand. Uh, looks like she's getting ready to start waving herself with the fan and everything like that. So, again, this it can look very elegant um, using these kind of poses. And just as just in case you you haven't seen it yet through the last couple of examples, legs are critically important 
and photography. Um, many women, many, um, many young ladies um, like to make sure that the leg poses are very good. So um, that's something that you want to pay attention to. Because again, if you look in a lot of different fashion magazines, the way that the legs are posed are extremely important. So again, another great example of, you know, of the different kind of elements that we've been talking about. You know, and so, um, you know, now she actually doesn't really have on any makeup either. She doesn't really have on any makeup, at least not in this shot. But, um, but you can see it still looks pretty good. Um, you know, a very well put together cosplay, but the pose itself, this is just another way of laying down and doing a great, uh, a great pose that way. Um, this sitting pose, you can see how the legs are kind of staggered. The hands are in the, are in the, um, are in the, um, um, her, 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 her um, are in her waist, uh, sitting very elegantly. And um, even how she has her head turned and everything like that, and looking up uh, from the camera because I shot, I shot, um, I shot standing over her uh, for uh, that's how I got this shot. And um, so that's just again something that you can consider doing. Staggered legs are very, very elegant. Sitting down, standing up, sitting in a the chair. There's a lot of ways that you can do that, but. Again, focusing on good leg posing, good hand posing, uh, bringing all of those elements together with having a great cosplay and good makeup helps you to get a stunning image. Um, this is um, this was shot at Yumacon last year, and again, uh, I want to draw your attention to her back. Look how it's arched. That's one of the things that we like to do in cost that I like to do uh, as a photographer is ask the model to arch your back. The reason why we ask them to arch their back is that it naturally lifts the chest. Not asking them to poke out their stomach or poke out their chest or something like that. Just ask them to arch their back. More respectful than asking them to do something like that. Um, but it uh, um, this is something it, it helps to create, give that curvature in the back that you see in a lot of uh, fashion magazines. You know, and uh, again, she has one leg that's serving as the base, the other serving as the accent. She has one hand with the gun that's that's on her uh, base leg, and the other one that's serving as an accent. Um, so all of these different elements that you can see are all brought into this uh, into this image, and these are all the things that you really have to think about and put together when you are posing your model. Again, same thing here. All the elements that we talked about. She's laying on the base leg. The leg on top is, is arched a bit. So it's serving as an accent. Her arm, she's her weight is on one arm. The other hand is serving as an accent. And um, you can kind of see that she's arching her, arching her back a bit. So again, all of the elements that we've been talking about are there. And you can use these any kind of way. And you can mix and match them. But these are all the elements that you need to consider um, having in your, uh, in your um, that you need to use in your images. So I want to thank you guys for joining me for this uh, presentation. Um, you can visit my website at stuckymedia.weebly.com. Um, there are links to all of my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please follow me on those. Of course, like and subscribe to this video. I will be doing others. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one.